Welcome to Catechetical Leader. I'm here with Jane Ragaza Mondoy, and uh, we are talking about catechetical leadership. Uh, Jane's the author of uh, an article in, in this month's magazine, but also the author of Cultivating Your Catechist, which is part of the Effective Catechetical Leader series, um, which is a joint effort between NCCL and Loyola Press. So welcome, Jane. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for the invitation. All right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so tell me what makes uh, for uh, effective catechetical leadership um, and effective leadership in evangelization. So thank you for this opportunity. You know, having the opportunity to write this book uh, with Loyola Press leads, leads me to ponder other areas where faith intersects life. And among those uh, is how catechetical leadership the skills we develop as catechetical leadership are so valuable in terms of evangelization, not only for those whom we serve directly through our ministry, but also um, in, in other areas. You know, I, sometimes we think that the world is divided between those who have faith and those who don't. <laughs> But really, I've come to truly understand that everyone has faith in something. Everyone is a believer in something. And as catechetical leaders, we have the opportunity through Christ to help connect faith and belief in something to faith and belief in Christ. So one of the things you talk about is, um, right at the beginning of the article, is finding the lost sheep. <laughs> right. Um, uh, how how do um, how do our skills as um, as as catechetical leaders um, or other leaders in evangelization? How does that help us um, do that? In this article, I explain. Um, I, I write about my um, experience being on the board for a Catholic school, a private Catholic school. Now, we would think that because we're in a, in a Catholic school setting that everyone around the table um, in, um, for a board of trustees uh, has a, um, is as involved with their faith as we are. And we know that everyone is in different places in their faith journey. And certainly with a, a board of trustees for even a Catholic school, not everyone around the table is Catholic. And these come from my observations of being intentional in our opportunities for evangelization and going back to the skills we have as leaders, that how could these skills apply to these particular individuals who are sitting around the table? Because as we know, evangelization is highly relational right? Um, there's not a one-size-fits-all. And so these are great opportunities because we um, have, an, have the time to develop relationships with others over time, to listen to their stories, um, to, um, to work together toward uh, particular end goals when it comes to the schools. These are great opportunities to be intentional in terms of our evangelization. I think one of the things you, you mentioned there that I, that I think is important is uh, this idea that, um, that evangelization is relational. And I think sometimes um, those of us who do this for a living um, uh, can tend to think that it's, um, uh, we tend to think in, sort of the, in terms of the process, in terms of the program, in terms of the uh, um, Maybe, maybe the bigger picture details, um, but we often forget that really where the rubber meets the road is in that, um, that personal relationship. Um, why, is that, um, why is that so important to remember? When we, when we pray, we reflect upon Jesus as our model for leadership. Um, we un come to understand that um, that he, of course, is the ultimate model of leadership <laughs> for us. I, I think, and I marvel, I, I think about his process of having this clear vision of, of the Father and why he was sent and, and how we as catechetical leaders 
um, must envision those, envision those compelling new ways to transmit the gospel. So what it really is our vision? How can we share in Christ's vision for um, what we are to do and who we are to be as catechetical leaders? And, and this piece in terms of influence, um, how we can help others um, recognize how Christ is indeed influencing their lives. What is such a rewarding aspect of all of this is you know, being around the table um, in, with this particular board, with this particular school, you know, God always gives us these opportunities of time and place. <laughs> and um, St. Louis School is a school for boys. It's a Catholic Marianist school for boys. And so in order to really drive a school, we went from about 500 students maybe six years ago to now 900 students and all boys. So it's, it's certainly a niche area. I look around the table at all of these primarily men who are entrepreneurs, the graduates of the school. Um, I came in six years ago hearing them say we're self-made men, which for us, you know, in common language, we understand that to mean that they're, um, you know, they're, they're, disciplined. You know, they understand uh, what it means to be successful in the business world. Yet, when we tap into this influence area, how Christ has influenced their lives, there's an immediate recognition, you know, um, that yes, uh, we are not necessarily, not self-made men, but we are made in the image and likeness of God. And we were smart enough to say yes, to what God has called us to.